Hello class, this is a lecture on evaluating and graphing polynomial functions. This is really our introduction to the term polynomial and uh, a lot of other definitions as well. So what is a polynomial? A polynomial is a monomial or sum of monomials. And with our definition of a monomial, let's do a quick reminder. A monomial is something like x or something like 2x, so a variable, the product of a number in a variable. That variable can have exponents, so something like 2x squared, or even something like 2 would be considered a monomial. So what a polynomial would be is these terms, we are going to call each of these, being added or subtracted to one another. So an example of a polynomial would be something like 3x to the third minus 4x squared minus 8. Okay? This is considered a monomial, so is this, so is this. A polynomial is just one of those things, like x, or these things being added or subtracted with one another, and just like as seen here in red. A polynomial is considered to be in standard form when the exponents are in decreasing order. So our exponent on this x here is 3, the exponent on the x here is 2, and this, there's like an invisible x here that so exponent is 0. Negative 8 is the same as negative 8x to the 0th power because x to the 0th is just 1. So the exponent on this is just 0. Therefore, the exponents are in decreasing order, and this is a, uh, a polynomial. A polynomial function is when this polynomial is going to be set equal to f of x a, or y, right? f of x or y. Then we can graph it. In order to be a polynomial, each exponent must be positive integers. Okay, we cannot have anything negative, or we cannot have any fractions in our exponent. And the coefficients must be real numbers, meaning we can't have i as our coefficients, numbers in front. The leading coefficient is the first coefficient when written in standard form. This is in standard form because the exponents are decreasing. And the first coefficient is that 3 there. And the degree is the biggest exponent. It also happens to be 3. Uh, it doesn't always have to match, but remember the, the degree is the biggest exponent. So here are our terms that we're going to be building. Uh, we're going to be using these terms throughout Chapter 5, so it's important that you have a good grasp of these terms. So here's some examples of some polynomial functions. These are weird because you know, like a sub 4 just means the coefficient on the x to the fourth term. It doesn't have to be, always be the same. Uh, here's some examples. I think these will resonate more. So here's a polynomial function, x to the third minus x squared plus 3x. Okay? All of the exponents are positive integers. Okay? There's no negative numbers, no fractions as exponents. And the coefficients are real. There's no i there, so that means it is a polynomial function. Its exponent, biggest exponent is 3, which means its degree is 3, and we call degree 3 things cubics. We call degree 4 things quartics. Degree 2, that was chapter 4, that's called a quadratic. And if its degree is 1, like this one, its biggest exponent would be 1. This is a linear function, right? This looks like mx plus b. That is a linear function degree 1. So we've already studied linear functions and quadratics, and we've talked about constants as well, but we've already studied specific chapters about these two. We're going to be studying cubics and cortex in this chapter, and beyond cortex, we're just going to call them fifth degree polynomials. If it was degree five, we'd call it a fifth degree polynomial. Degree six, sixth degree polynomial. It doesn't really matter what the actual degree is, we're just going to call it by that number. So let's play a little quick game here. Let's talk about if these are polynomial functions or not. Uh, starting with h. Is h a polynomial function? What you have to ask yourself is, uh, are all of the exponents positive integers, meaning no negatives, no fractions, which they are, and are all of the coefficients real, which means they can't have i in it. So h is a polynomial. Even though it has a fraction coefficient, that is allowed. Uh, this one here, the square root of 3 is allowed to be a coefficient because it's not imaginary, but the i is not allowed to be a coefficient. Remember, it 
have to be real. So F is not a polynomial function. M is also not a polynomial function. The reason being is that we cannot have negatives as our exponents. Remember, your exponents have to be positive and they have to be integers, meaning no fractions. So M is not, and neither is K, because K has a fractional exponent. G actually is a polynomial, even though it may not look like it. Uh, the exponents are 4, 2, and 0. Okay, so all of the exponents match, are, are okay. We don't have any negatives, we don't have any fractions. And then the coefficients are all real. Pi is a real number, it doesn't have an imaginary uh, aspect to it. And the square root of 3 is also real. So g is a polynomial function. We'd call this a degree 4 polynomial, sorry, which is a quartic. And its leading coefficient would be pi, kind of an odd one, but it is a polynomial. And n is also a polynomial. This is a degree 1 with 1 as its leading coefficient. So when it comes to graphing these polynomials, I'm actually not going to talk about n behavior right now. We're going to skip that part. But if I were to ask you to graph these polynomials, you should be able to do, actually graph this one by hand. Its slope is negative 2 and its y-intercept is 0. So you'd start here, and you'd go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and that's going to be where how you would graph this. However, I want to make sure that you do know how to graph this by by using your calculator, because when it's a degree three polynomial, I'm never gonna expect to do that by hand. I'm always just gonna expect you to go to your graphing calculator and graph it. So how you would do this is you would just go to the y equals button. I know I've shown a lecture on this before, uh, but I'm just gonna revisit this. x to the third plus two. And we can push graph and we can get an image of that. I do not want you ever just looking at it and drawing the shape though. Instead, what I want you doing is pushing second and then table and then going to this table and typing in these points, plotting these points, negative two, negative six, negative one, one, zero, two, one, three, and then at two, it's ten, so it's up here, so it's like this. That's how I want you graphing these. Uh, I'm not going to ask for n behavior, but I am always going to ask for you to tell me the domain and the range of these graphs. Uh, the, remember, the domain is asking on what x values does this graph ever achieve. So start over here at negative infinity. Would this graph get out here to negative, you know, negative 10? Yeah, it would. This line goes up here forever, and it's always moving to the left. And it's always moving to the right. This graph goes to the right forever. So its domain is going to be all real numbers. The range, on the other hand, is asking what y values does this graph ever achieve. So that's going, going up and down. Does this graph go down forever? It most certainly does. Does this graph go up forever? It also does that. So its range is all real numbers. That's also true for this function. This function and this function uh, have a lot of similarities, including the domain and the range. This function goes to the left forever. I know it's mostly going down, but it's still always progressing to the left. Likewise, this graph goes to the right forever. So its domain is all real numbers, and its range is also all real numbers. This graph goes down forever and up forever, all real numbers. Let's look at a couple more examples. Negative 2x to the fourth. When we go to graph this, uh, this is what the graph is going to look like. We can push second and then table and get some points. We're not going to have that many of them, unfortunately. Negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 2. Right after that, it's 2, negative 32. It's so sharp. Right? So that's what the graph looks like. We still need to be able to find the domain and the range of this graph. The domain, of course, is asking 
what x values does this graph ever achieve? Does it go to the left forever? Does it go to the right forever? Does it achieve the x value of negative 3? Yes, it does, at negative 162, right? Does it achieve the x value of negative 4? Yes. This goes forever, right? It's achieving all x values in the negative direction and all x values in the positive direction. So its domain is still all real numbers. The range, however, is not all real numbers. This graph goes, does go down forever, but it doesn't go up forever, right? This graph never achieves any y values in this vicinity. It goes up to zero and it stops achieving at zero and then it goes back down. So its range is gonna be y values less than or equal to zero. How do we know that it doesn't go above zero? Here's a way we can do this. If we go back to the graph, we know it looks like that. We could push second and then calculate the maximum. So this is called a maximum because we wanna see the highest point it reaches. We know it's going up, we wanna know the highest point it reaches, so it's a maximum. So I'm gonna go to the four, second, choose four, which was maximum. It's gonna give me the prompt left bound, which means I'm gonna bring this cursor to the left of the maximum. This is creating a left boundary. So find the maximum between this left bound, then I push enter, now it says right bound. Let me go over here and press enter. And then do you want it to guess the maximum between those two points that I've chosen? Yes, I do. And this is gonna be kind of weird to you guys. Uh, if it gives you E like this, it's zero. I know that this doesn't look like doesn't look like zero, but this is saying move the decimal place over six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's point zero 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 two seven. It's zero. Your calculator is guessing, and that's a rounding error to your calculator. This one says e to the negative twenty second. It's saying move your your decimal over twenty two times. So it's the point that it reaches here is zero zero. So once again, we're trying to answer the question about the range. So its range goes from negative infinity up until zero, and it stops achieving y values at zero, then it goes back down. Zero is the highest value it ever reaches. Let's look at y equals 3x squared plus 2 then. We go back over here, we can clear this 3x squared plus 2. We can go ahead and push the table, take a look at it again. So negative 1, 5, 0, 2, 1, 5, and then we have that graph. As for its domain, this is going to be true of all polynomial functions. Everything in section 5.2 is going to have all reals as its domain. The range is sometimes going to have restrictions, but the domain will always be all reals. The reason why the domain is all reals is because this graph goes to the left forever and to the right forever. Its range, however, is not all real numbers. Its range, right, no y values are ever achieved anywhere down here. Actually, anywhere below two, no y values are ever achieved. This graph doesn't go below that. It starts at two and goes everything above it. So we would say y values greater than or equal to, to two. We could get this answer by just looking at the graph here, but that won't always be the case. Let's do that same min max thing. This time it's a minimum. So we'd push second, calculate the minimum. Left bound, bring the cursor to the left of the minimum. Right bound, bring the cursor to the right of the minimum. Enter, this one again is zero, because it's got the E thing, so zero comma two is the minimum right there. So that is how we're going to graph our polynomial functions. Our last question of the day is going to be just evaluate the function and identify characteristics of this function. Uh, the function that we're dealing with is 2x to the fourth minus 3x to the third plus 2x minus 5. The first question is just what is f of negative 2? 
Remember from using function notation in the previous sections, all I'm asking you to do is plug negative 2 in for x here, here, and here. So what that would look like would be f of negative 2. We plugged in negative 2 there as well. f of negative 2. When I plugged negative 2 into the function f, what I got out was 2, negative 2 to the fourth, minus 3, negative 2 to the third, plus 2, negative 2, minus 5. If you type just this in your calculator, it'll give you the right answer. Okay? I don't want you to complicate things. You can just type that whole thing in. Make sure you put the negative 2 in parentheses. So that would look like 2, negative 2 to the fourth, minus 3, negative 2 to the third, plus 2, negative 2, minus 5. What I got was 47. So when you plug negative 2 into the function f, you get 47. Another way you could answer this question, this is kind of a fun way to do it. If I were to type this into my calculator, 2x to the fourth minus 3x to the third plus 2x minus 5. When I go to my table and I look at negative 2, because that's what I'm plugging in, what do I get out? 47. Up next, what is the degree? This is just vocab questions. The degree, remember, is the biggest exponent. This is a fourth degree polynomial. What do we call fourth degree polynomials? This is from our table uh, back here, right? Fourth degree polynomials are called cortex. So make sure you have this in your notes. And then, what is the leading coefficient? The leading coefficient of this function is two because it's in standard form, and that's the first coefficient. So that's what I have for you guys for section 5.2. Let me know if you guys have any questions.